conceptual perspective. Talk about Dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse. Uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Hello, everybody. It's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having a great day. Look, this is the second installment of a series in which I'm reading short excerpts from my 19th book. Born in Captivity, Psychopathology as a Legacy of Slavery. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is I want you to have a better understanding of some of the topics I talk about and the in-depth uh, uh, the in-depth awareness of where I'm pulling this from. I have spent countless hours, thousands and thousands of academic research hours in developing an understanding of the black dilemma and the enigmatic, enigmatic issues that we face on a consistent basis and developing uh, solutions. And so if you haven't ordered this book and you are a reader, I definitely recommend it, but I'm going to share with you just some excerpts out of it over the next couple of weeks as we close out the year so that you can get an understanding of where I'm coming from and why I'm so passionate about what I talk about. Because there's no way that I can go into the depth that I need to when I'm making a point. I need people to understand that I didn't just pull it out of my butt, that I didn't just snatch it out the air, that I literally have invested a lot of time, energy, effort, and passion in understanding it. And hopefully challenge some of uh, my people to gain an understanding of it as well. Uh, this reading is coming from Chapter 10, Special Education as a Socioeconomic Weapon. Uh, the original paper that substantiates the ch this particular chapter was commissioned by the Odyssey Project for the purpose of establishing an official position on an en enigmatic issue that has been at the core of multitudinous conundrums within the black collective. For nearly 40 years, the special education system in the U.S. has been used as a mechanism to isolate and ostracize African-American youth, especially young African-American males. This paper not only outlined the long this long-standing problem, but it also highlights the influence that institutional racism and cultural indifference play in the dynamic responsible for disproportionality. The African-American Holocaust and Miseducation of Black Youth. The history of American education abounds with themes that represent the inextricable ties between citizenship and a dem dem democratic society and popular education, James D. Anderson. When I agreed to write The Miseducation of Black Youth in America, I decided to take an ulterior approach to unveiling and discussing the topic while the public education system plays a prevalent and decisive role in the education of most African Americans, it is not the end all and be all to providing holistic edu providing a holistic educational experience for our youth. Additionally, it is not only the sub substandard academic curriculums that present uh, the greatest problems. It is the culture that encompasses the system, a culture that underwrites the inferiority complexes of African-American students. When it comes to subpar curriculums, I am more concerned with the absence of holistic and accurate accounts of black history that extend beyond slavery and honor the 
majority uh, the major accomplishments of blacks socially, economically, politically, and environmentally throughout history. The primary theme of Carter G. Woodson's masterpiece, The Miseducation of the Negro, is that withholding the true and holistic history of any group will culminate in an identity crisis. And when a race of people suffers an identity crisis, they will begin to fracture along the lines of social responsibility, responsibility and individual purpose. My goal in writing The Miseducation of Black Youth in America was not simply to point out a nefarious and inadequate educational system, but the failure of African Americans to holistically educate our own, especially in historical significance and racial socialization. There's no sense of identity and purpose on a collective level. My diet uh, my diacritical approach to addressing the conundrum of miseducated black youth is meant to illuminate the importance of direct involvement and the importance of developing and understanding the concept of holistic education. In short, holistically educating our youth is the result of seeing beyond the need for academic achievement to understand the purpose of education. Education is an empowerment mechanism that is designed to prepare youth to become empowered and productive adults that possess the capacity to initiate and facilitate change within their personal and cultural periphery. Education that does not empower the student is not authentic education, but is an illusion of progress that lacks power. While we must give a considerable amount of attention to the quality of education our children receive in academics, we must see beyond academics to deal with the core issues associated with holistic education, such as knowledge of self. When a child suffers in a diminished and damaged or diminished or damaged self-concept, they find themselves at a disadvantage in society in general and in the educational process in specific. It is the proper development of a positive self-concept that results in elevated self-esteem and the belief that anything is possible. It was Thomas Jefferson that asserted that a group or race of people cannot be ignorant and free simultaneously. Freedom cannot be achieved physically if the mind has not first experienced freedom. What we are witnessing at this juncture in our journey as a race in this country is the results of exchanging our physical change for mental ones. Anyone who understands this dynamic, dynamic will likely agree with my assessment that we are in a worse situation in our mental bondage than we were as physical slaves. If we continue to expect our oppressor to educate our children, we will continue to be educated downward into docility and conformity. The oppressor will never educate the oppressed to be a threat. Anyone who's ever heard me lecture or speak on the importance of educating our youth or has read my book, The Miseducation of Black Youth in America, or Academic Apartheid, you know that I define uh, education as a holistic process of empowerment and preparation that prepares our children for adulthood it is preparing them to go into a world that's inherently hostile towards them and not only compete but win in in order to do that there has to be a sense of identity a sense of self a sense of self-awareness uh that has been under assault since we first landed on this continent um in 1619 and it has been a constant push to hide who we are from us i mean to who we are from us so we tend to assume uh the intensity and driven purpose to be like our oppressor to adhere uh and and assimilate into their idea the eurocentric idea you hear me talk about that a lot the eurocentric idea of what is beautiful the eurocentric idea of what's professional the eurocentric idea of what's classy the eurocentric idea of you know all that is and we tend to and the thing is when you tend when you attend to assimilate into something that was never designed for you you can never appreciate or experience the full capacities of its benefit because it wasn't designed for you you have to walk in the fullness of who you are your greatest uh, asset is self it is an awareness of self it is the push and when you see our children especially our young black boys literally at the age of five already being herded into and referred for special education assignments and ieps uh when the vast majority of them don't need them now if you if there's a necessary requirement because of some learning disability then yes we need to take advantage of that but what we cannot do is allow the special education education system to become a 
pipeline, so to speak, to alienate young black boys from the educational process. Uh, because what happens is it increases the dropout rate. And we also know that um, if you don't complete high school, you're five times more likely to become incarcerated. Well, now you're creating the school to prison pipeline primarily through the alienation of the young black male early in the process. As early as five years old, kids are being diagnosed with ADHD, oppositional defiant disorder, uh, autism, and a bunch of other things that may or may not apply. And they are the school is getting double the amount for each student for the assignment and these young boys are being alienated and put outside and labeled and this label follows them uh it is a negative connotation attached to the label and they become ostracized and they become uncomfortable and they become eventually um disen disenfranchised and they leave the school uh, before graduating at a higher rate than any other group. And so then we must ask ourselves, how does that benefit us? I am not saying that this is the end all be all as, as I stated in, in, in that particular excerpt, we need to learn how to effectively educate our children ourselves. Uh, not everybody is in a position to homeschool, but you need to be engaged. Your children need you to be present in their lives they need your influence they need your support no one is obligated to tell them they're beautiful at school no one is obligated to search out and discover their gift and their genius which they have i don't care who they are what they're going through i've worked with all types of children from autism to down syndrome opposition to divine disorder adhd uh and so many others and what I can tell you is they all have genius. They all have gift. What we have to do is have the patience and the desire to step outside of the box and discover who they are, not what the world is trying to make them be, not the box that everybody's trying to fit them in, but who are they? Because that's going to define and lay out the path of what they're going to become and where they will thrive. They're going to thrive in the area of their gifting. That's why they have the gift. And it's our responsibility as parents, as grandparents, as uh, adults to make sure that we empower them, that we socialize them, that we introduce them to themselves and that we do it emphatically and consistently in a way that when they walk out into that world, that's going to reverse it and tell them just because of your complexion, you can't rise to this. Just because of your complexion, you're not beautiful. Just because of your complexion, you're automatically intellectually inferior. Just because of your complexion, there are just certain things in this world you can't touch. And we need to teach our children to touch dreams. We need to teach our children to touch the sky. We need to teach our children to rise. And so that is my challenge. So when you hear me speaking on this, I'm speaking on it from years and years of study of understanding how this system is working. Um, if you want to understand more about it, read Born in Captivity. If you want to get specifically into it, you can order uh, the Miseducation of Black Youth or my latest, which is Academic Apartheid. Uh, but whatever you do, understand that there's going to be a need for us to become more engaged, more involved. On that note, um, I'm going to get out of here. As I always say, um, we really need you. Uh, you'll see uh, in these videos that we are uh, requesting you to support the work we do. None of this stuff comes free, but it is absolutely necessary. We are in a war for the mind of our children, and we're losing that war. Support the work we do. Look in the description box, click the link, and show some love. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day.